You want to know how to rate on lifecycle events of your Android Jetpack Compose app? In this video, you will learn how. Hi guys, my name is Yannick Reis. I hope you're doing well and I welcome you to a new video. Understanding the lifecycle of an Android activity is one of the first tasks you will encounter when getting into Android development. Take a look at the following app that tracks the time a user is actively on a specific screen. To decide when the user is actively on the screen, we need to make use of certain lifecycle events. If we look at the following graph, we can easily identify events we need to consider when we want to decide if a user has entered or left the application. If we follow the lifecycle, we can see that we need to start our timer in the onResume lifecycle event and pause it in the onPause event. If we come back to the onResume event, we want to activate it again. Let's see how we can easily react on those lifecycle changes in Jetpack Compose. So here in Android Studio, we can see the code for the timer app. And as you can see, we have one simple timer screen composable, which on the other hand, passes down a timer screen state, which solely contains a pass time milliseconds value. And this value on the other hand, gets displayed in this time display text composable here. So just some simple formatting. And as you can see, the time is running here. And how is this time calculated? Let's have a quick look into the timer screen view model. And as you can see here, we have a simple delay of 10 milliseconds and each iteration here in this coroutine job or timer here, um, we calculate the elapsed time and put it into the yeah, state value here. So if we go back into the composable, we can see that um, we just launched the start timer from the launched effect. What's the problem here now? We only want to track the active time or the time a user is present on a screen. So if we put the app into the background, we remembered it's 2.38, then we would expect that the time proceeds at that value. So let's see if that happens. You can see here, 2.39. Oh, and now we can see it's 2.54. And that is of course, because we didn't stop the timer. As we discussed in the introduction of this video, we of course need to react on specific lifecycle changes to implement our desired behavior. So instead of just launching the timer at um, the composable startup or the first composition here, we want to start the timer only when the app is in the on resume state and if it goes into the on pause, we want to stop it again. So how can we do that? First, let's introduce a small library dependency. Because I'm using version catalogs in this project here, we go to the libs versions tumble and then we add the lifecycle runtime compose dependency here with the version at least 2.7.0. Then of course to apply it to our module, go to the build grade or KTS file and scroll down and add it here to the uh, dependencies block. If you're not using uh, version catalogs, you can simply um, say here implementation and then um, use here the Android lifecycle dot or point here and 7.0 and you should achieve the same. Then go for a quick sync and now go back to the timer screen. And then we can make use of a simple helper composable, which is called lifecycle resume effect. And this lifecycle resume effect, if we quickly go into the composable here, takes a key and also a lifecycle owner, which is the current one um, as the default parameter. And we can see that we have some effects here. And how can we use this function now? Just call here in this um, lifecycle resume pause effect scope our start timer because that is the point when we get into the on resume. And then we can say on pause or dispose, like the name implies. This is when the on pause or um, the pause of our composable gets called. So now you may already saw it. We also have a stop timer function in our view model. So let's simply say view model dot stop timer. And we can remove the launch effect here. And let's see what happens if we restart our app. Okay, now we have our restarted app here and let's retry the case we had before. 
So let's um, put our app into the background. Remember, um, 25 seconds. Let's wait a little bit. And then we go back into our app. So 26 seconds. And as you can see, it resumes right away from the last saved um, timestamp. So great, we saw we can easily react on the on resume and on pause lifecycle changes. But there is more. If we might not want the on resume and on pause, both on start and on destroy, we can simply say lifecycle um, start effect instead. And if we take a look at the documentation here, you can see that um, schedule a pair of effects to run when the lifecycle receives either a lifecycle event on start or lifecycle event on stop. This is the equivalent for those two lifecycle functions. So, but sometimes you might just want to react on one single lifecycle event. In those cases, you can simply say lifecycle event effect. And then here for the event parameter, you can define your lifecycle event. So you can say, for example, just on pause, on resume or whatever. So if we just want to use that, we could say view model um, start timer and then we have also our on pause and here we would say um, stop timer and by that you can easily handle your life cycle changes in your jetpack compose android app code so you no longer need to pass life cycle events from your activity down to your composables or register for life cycle observer and so on just use those simple functions to interact with the life cycle so what do you think of this lifecycle handling in Jetpack Compose? Do you might even use other solutions to handle those cases? What is your opinion? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope to see you soon.